Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a classroom in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm here working with a group of agents on getting their business, I'm getting, sorry, getting their listing presentation ready to zoom into 2018. But last week, I did a webinar about business planning, and one of the things that we talked about was the five stages of a real estate business. And I had a couple of questions that came from that webinar, and so I decided that I'd come to you this morning and unpack these just a little bit more. Over the last 24 years of being in the real estate business and really kind of being a student of a real estate agent, I really think there's five stages in any real estate business, and so I wanna talk about each one of them a little bit. The first one is the startup phase. The second one is the urgency phase. The next one is the break-even stage. Next comes the money stage, and then comes the strategic stage. Let's talk about each one of them, and let's talk about how you move from one to the other. The startup stage, you probably remember it because you are learning as fast as you can learn. You're this big sponge and your goal is just to get your first deal. That is what you're really, really trying to accomplish. You're also not making any money at this, right? You're getting money either through a second job or through savings, or maybe you're being supported by a spouse. The emotions of this are thrilling and scary. You know, this is something new and you're trying to make it, but you're scared, right? And your biggest challenge really is time because it takes you so long to do virtually anything and a lot longer, you know, it takes two days to do a CMA, right? And so those are some of the problems that you have. Now, once you get past that stage, you get into the urgency stage. You've got your first couple of deals under your belt and that means that you just become consumed, consumed with, okay, this is harder than I thought it was gonna be, and so if I'm gonna make it, man, I have got to hump. I have this, these feelings of urgency going on. I'm still not making it in the real estate business. I'm feeling a little bit panicked, and my biggest challenge is I'm not so skilled. So deals are taking a lot longer to accomplish. That is one of the problems with this is it takes so much longer to move your way through. Now let's get to the break even stage. Now the break even stage is kind of a funny stage. You are focused on production and more specifically, you're focused on transactions. You're going as hard as you can, the next transaction, the next transaction, the next transaction. What that means is you are mostly getting your money from business, but let me say, you're at this little wobble point, right? You could be one month of really a lot of money and the next month or two or three, absolutely nothing. And so it really is, you're going back and forth between stage three and stage two, so you're wobbling back and forth on those stages. Now, let's talk about your emotions. You're pooped. You are exhausted because it's just plain old hard to be at break even. You are at break even, but it is hard to stay at break even, and your biggest challenge is you're on the roller coaster. Right? You know the roller coaster I'm talking about. High highs, low lows. Now, stage four. Stage four is a really interesting stage and probably the most insidious stage of all because you got money. You're doing well. You're making money, but you're not really wealthy. And oh, by the way, you can get stuck here in this stage, I have to say. So the other thing that happens is your lifestyle is coming all from business, which is great. You're confident. You're confident that things are going really well, but you've got some significant challenges. Most of the people who are in this stage have these problems. They're ignoring something. They're ignoring their health. They're ignoring their family. They're ignoring their the business side of the business. You know what I'm talking about. Taxes and 
profit and loss sheets and measurement and evaluations and all those things that businesses should be doing. I told the story on the webinar about a woman, at least I think I did, about a woman that I met in uh, San Francisco while attending a Colwell Banker National Conference. And they were doing the Southeastern Awards. And she got this huge award she had made in gross commission income, like $2.4 million in the previous year. And her average purchase price was $89,000. Think about that. And she went up and everybody stood up and applauded her and it was all these accolades. Woo, woo, woo. And then what happened was she came and sat down beside me and I could see she was crying. And I reached over to touch her and say to her, you deserve that emotion. And what I heard from her, she looked over and talked to me kind of out of the side of her mouth and she said, I'm a fraud. The IRS is about to take everything I own. <sighs> She was in that stage. I wish I could tell you that she's the only person I've seen that happen to in the real estate business, but that wouldn't be true. I have seen that happen to lots and lots and lots of real estate agents, unfortunately, that they have ignored that piece of their business. So let's talk about stage five. Stage five is marked by prosperity instead of money. There's a difference because prosperity means lifestyle and money, right? It also means that you are very prosperous, that you are working within your brilliance, that you have the freedom that you wanted when you started this crazy business. Most of us got in here for control and freedom and flexibility. Now, typically, this stage comes in two forms. You either have what I call the solopreneur, the agent who does really, really well by themselves. They're happy to sit at 10, 12 million and have maybe a closing assistant and an assistant, but they just depend on themselves. That's all they depend on. They don't depend on a team. They're happy there because they're, they're doing what they're brilliant at. They're selling real estate. So I really like that little, that's, that, that's the solopreneur, but they have some challenges. And their challenge is that the minute something happens, they get a sick family member, perhaps. Something like that happens, they get tilted. They get tilted and they'll slide back into stage four. Now the other piece of this is the team. The other kind of model of this is the team. And the challenge with that is it's usually the really good producer who comes up and they've got enough volume now that they can do a team. But the challenge is they're good salespeople. They're not necessarily good managers and they're not necessarily good leaders. So those are the challenges of that group. Now let me say to you, there's no timetable for these. You can go slow, you can go fast. It really makes no difference at all. But people get stuck within some of the stages. Now, why do they get stuck? One of the things I'd like to say is there's this common denominator between number one and number four, and that common denominator is they're chasing transactions. So one through four is chasing transactions. That's all they're doing. Where's the next transaction? Where's the next transaction? Where's the next transaction? So which one are you in? Which one are you in? So if you are, if you still need money from outside sources to make it, you're not number five, you're not number four, you're not number three, but you are most definitely either in stage one or stage two. If you're on a money roller coaster, months of great money followed by several months of nothing, followed by great months, followed by several months of nothing, the roller coaster, you are definitely not in number five, you're not in number four, you're not in two, and you're not in one, you're in the break even stage. If you are making enough money but struggling to pay attention to the other things. You're not in five, you're not in three, you're not in two. You are absolutely in stage four. The money stage is the stage that you are in. If you have consistent systems that are bringing in consistent prospects and are making consistent money, then you are in stage five. 
you are in stage five, which is the strategic stage. Now, let me say to you, how do you get out of one through four into five? Really simple. What you do is you stop, excuse me, you stop concentrating on the transaction and begin concentrating on a plan. That is how you do it. Number one through four are all about the chase of the transaction. You know that hamster wheel that you get on and go bah, 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 as fast as you can? That's what one through four is doing. And when you're chasing the transaction, you do stuff you really shouldn't do. You do stuff like take listings that you shouldn't take or take unqualified buyers or because maybe, 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 maybe that will happen. And that is what you do. That kind of behavior sucks you dry of time, energy, enthusiasm for your business. It drives people out of the business. It's bad juju all around. And so that's really why I wanted to talk to you about that because it really is about a plan, having all your systems together and moving through the systems. That's what stage five is all about. How do you figure that out? Well, you figure that out based on doing a business plan, doing a business analysis, understanding what you're brilliant at, understanding what you need to dump, understanding how you put these regular plans in where daily decisions are not a problem. That plan has already defined all of it for you. Of course, how do you find that? Well, we have something called the strategic year. And it's that time of year when you need to double down on business planning. So if we can help, go reach out and take a look at the strategic year. And really, I am filming this on, hmm, I don't have any idea what today's date is. I think it's December 12th, honestly, is what I think today is. And so I am filming that on December 12th. You've got half the month to build that runway. So when you hit January 1st, you can take off and you can really put your foot down on that accelerator for 2018. Let me know what kind of questions you have. I would love to answer them and have a good rest of the week.